Hi, thanks for tuning in, everyone. So good to see you. Hope you have enjoyed your weekend and um, you are ready for a blessed week uh, in store for you. Uh, I just wanted to take a little bit of time to talk to you about a subject or an issue that I know so many Christians either have dealt with or maybe currently are dealing with, or maybe you know of someone who's dealing with this right now. And this is that, uh, that what I consider to be a sensitive subject called church hurt. It's one of the things where we kind of don't like talking about it, but deep down inside, we, we know we've, we're dealing with it. Uh, we're, we've experienced it. And sometimes we just don't, really don't know how to handle it or how to, uh, how to handle it. Uh, I know, uh, for myself, I've experienced it. I've seen it uh, happen to me up close and personal, and I know of others who have dealt with it. And and so I just want to give a little insight here uh, before we start the work week. Uh, some things that I believe that the Lord has shown me, and I just want to share it, pass, pay it forward, pass it on to you. Uh, some things to maybe consider uh, where it comes to this subject. And so with that in mind, I want to start tonight uh, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18. And this is Jesus, he's speaking here, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, and this is verse 7, okay? Uh, Jesus is speaking, he says, Woe to the world because of offenses. Woe to that man by whom the offense comes. Woe to the world because of offenses, for offenses must come, but woe to that man by whom the offense comes. So what Jesus is basically saying is that offenses must come come there is no way you're going to get around offenses there's no uh nothing you can do there's you know a lot of times when things happen is it's so easy to take things personal and think well maybe you said something or did something and you know maybe you had it coming and you know maybe some i don't know sometimes we do you know uh unintentionally but there are many times i would say probably the majority of times you didn't do anything and you just happen to be in in a place and it just happened and here is Jesus, who is God, telling you that offenses must come. Um, I think for, for many Christians, um, it's so important for us to realize that very often what the devil will do is in, in order to really make it sting and hurt. See, here's one thing. It's, it's one thing to have offense come from somebody that you don't know. Maybe you're in traffic, you're driving, and then someone you know tells you that you're number one. You know what I'm talking about, and they keep it moving, and then you could be, but it really doesn't have that much of an impact on you most of the time because you know within yourself you never want to see that person again. Or maybe it's somebody in the grocery store, maybe it's somebody out in the parking lot, maybe it's you know whoever. Um, but oftentimes, what the devil will do is he will use people that you are familiar with, namely family members, close friends, and even in many cases, Christians, even preachers. And the reason for that is because it, it has a little bit more kick behind it. Uh, it. It can sting a little bit more. And the whole idea is, and see, here's something that we very often do in the church is that we tend to put people, even Christians, especially pastors on a pedestal or put them in a position where they should never be. And so when that person says or does something to you, then that's all you need. I mean, and it won't take much if you're idolizing somebody to get you out of the church and now you don't go at all because that preacher, say, say for example, it's a preacher and they say or do something to you and, and it's offensive and it's wrong because that person is a spokesperson for God, it's, it can sometimes almost be like God did that to you. And... So for that reason, you know what? I can just love Jesus on my own and I can just, you know, stay home. I, I still love God. I still love Jesus in my own heart. Uh, but I don't need to be in a assembly in order to worship him or to show or demonstrate my Christianity. And that that's very that, that, that happens all the time. I remember for myself, I was um, probably I, I wrote the book on this. Yeah, when it comes to to putting people on a pedestal or putting them in a place where they don't belong. Uh, I, I wrote the book on, I had a PhD in doing that. And so now I remember before my first year in college, I went to a Christian school, my, actually my second year of college. And I was so excited to be going to this school. Uh, they believed in uh, so many of the, uh, I, 
so many of the same beliefs or uh, teachings that I had grew up with and uh, the gifts of the spirit, uh, being filled with the Holy Ghost, praying in other tongues, um, just and just to think that I would actually be in, in an environment where I'm surrounded by this day and night. I mean, it was just, it was more than I could imagine or hope for. And so I was talking it up and talking it up, talking it up, and my hopes and expectations were so high. And my my dad actually, I, so I was sharing this with my dad one day, and you know I've been telling him for days, even weeks, you know, and I, I so I guess he just he could sort of see where I was headed with this, and he just gently reminded me, Kurt, the devil is there too, and he had to bring me back down to earth, and it's like wait a minute because see you're setting yourself up and you're putting this place on such a pedestal. And it's not if, it's when somebody says something, when someone does something, you're going to fall. You're going to fall. This is why the Bible says, do not rely or trust in the arm of the flesh. There's only one person you should be keeping your eyes on, and that's Jesus. I tell you what, if you look at man too long and you get too close to them, even if they're a preacher, even if they're in a full-time ministry, you might, just might find out and realize they're human. That's going to happen. And it's going to hurt real bad. So you have to be real careful about putting people in a, in a position or looking to anybody other than the Lord Jesus himself as your example. He's the only one with an A++ report card who's never missed it one time. Mankind will do it. Mankind will do it. And here's the thing about the church you have to keep in mind. You have to look at it like this. The church, I oftentimes liken the church to a laundromat. You never take clean clothes to the laundromat. Only dirty clothes go to the laundromat to, to what? Get cleaned up in as much the same way in the church. Jesus said he didn't call, he didn't come to call the unrighteous, but the righteous to repent, repentance. So the fact that you're in church, you're around people who are there getting their lives cleaned up. So that's, in a sense, that's probably where it's most likely to happen. Because we're all works in progress. Jesus is doing something with all of us. And so very oftentimes, the devil will use Christians, even us, if we're honest about it, he's used us too, cause us to say or do things that we probably shouldn't have. And then you end up having to go and apologize. But we have to be real careful about putting people in a position of idolizing them where they don't belong. And preachers, idolizing preachers, that's big now in, in the ministry. That's big time. A lot of people are doing that now. And when something happens, it's not if, it's when something happens, the devil will work through that minister. He can and cause you to fall and to separate from God. I have seen it happen so many times. And so this is why I'm making this video, speaking from my own experience. And so I, I wanna help you before anything like that can happen. And if it has happened, maybe to encourage you, hey, you know what, that person was wrong and probably the best thing you can do, whoever it was that hurt you, is to pray for them. To pray for them. You keep, you keep praying for them. And I promise you one thing. The devil will stop reminding you of what that person did to you. Because every time he reminds you, if you'll pray for him, he'll stop using that person. He'll stop reminding you of what that person did to you. I want, you to, I want to show you another verse here in John's Gospel, chapter 7. John's Gospel, chapter 7, here in verse 1. It says, After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea, because the Jews sought to kill him. All right. Verse 2, now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brothers therefore said to him, depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. Now, why are they saying this to him? Verse 5, for even his brothers did not believe in him. Isn't that something? And this is Jesus. He's God Almighty in the flesh. And the Bible says even his, his brothers did not believe in him. So very often the enemy will use those closest to you, your family, your friends, 
people in the church, your pastor, the de he'll use whoever he can to hurt you the most. So if that happens to you, just know this, Jesus himself went through it. And Jesus himself said offenses must come. So if that's happening to you, or if it has happened to you, just know this, you are in good company. You're in very good company. I heard a story, and I think this is true, but don't quote me on this. I'm probably, if it is true, I'm leaning, I'm along the, thinking along the mindset that it, that it is true. Um, but I heard a, a, a story about a lady. She was in church, and she was very faithful. She went every week. And but one day, I guess over a period of time, she was in while she was in service, she began noticing that a lot of people were on their cell phones, weren't paying attention to the pastor while he was preaching. The, the other ones who weren't on their phones, they were asleep. And so she's looking around in the service and this happens, you know, week after week, month after month after month. And she sees this going on and that just kind of did something to her. And she's like, you know what? I've had it. And so at the end of the service, she goes up to the, the deacon and she tells the deacon, she says, hey, you know, this was a good sermon. I, I appreciate the sermon, um, but I got some news for you. And so the deacon was like, OK, well, what's up? You know, what's going on? And she's like, well, you know what? I'm leaving the church. I'm leaving the church and uh, I, I can't I can't I can't do it no more. And so he looks at her. And he's like, well, why? What's going on? She says, well, I noticed something. She says, you know, the whole time, last few weeks, you know, while the preacher is preaching his sermon, some people are asleep, they're dozing off, they're not even interested in what the preacher is saying. And then the rest of them, they're on their cell phones and they're texting people and, you know, I mean, they're just not into it. And so it's like, what's the point of being here? And so rather than react or, or act shocked or surprised, the deacon says, okay, this is what I want you to do. So I want you to come back next week and I want you to do something. And uh, so, uh, so the following week, so she comes back and he gives her a glass and in the glass he fills it all the way up with water and he tells her he says now in the service he says once the service starts he says i just want you to walk around walk around the service, walk around the back of the church but i want you to walk around the back and i want you to do your best to keep the water from spilling okay so i want you to hold this glass as still as you can don't let a drop spill while you're walking and she thought that was an odd request, but she's like, okay, fine, whatever, I'll, I'll do it. She, she had a lot of respect for this person. And so uh, so she does it. And so the man's preaching. And so she's got this glass in the back of the church. And so she's walking. She's doing her best not to spill. And so he, she's walking back and forth. And at the end of the service, he comes up to her and he says, so how did you do? She's like, I didn't spill anything. And then he asked her another question. He says, now, tell me. How many people, did you happen to notice how many people were on their cell phones during the service? Did you happen to notice how many people were dozing off and falling asleep in the service? And she's like, no, no, actually I didn't. And he says, well, why not? And she says, well, I was too busy focusing on the glass to make sure I didn't spill the water. And he said, exactly my point. Your focus was on something else other than the people, which is why you didn't notice it. If you keep your attention and your gaze focused on Jesus, what other people are doing or aren't doing won't affect you so much. She got the message and she stayed in church. So like I said, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but if, if that story is true, then, you know, that's, that's good. And if it's not, then it's good anyway. It, it, I get the point. And so I just want to share that with you, that if you feel like you, you're dealing with church hurt, just know there's it's a high probability that your attention was on the wrong thing. You were looking, your focus was on the wrong thing. You were looking at man where your attention should have been focused and solely on Jesus, the Christ, the head of the church. And, you know, there's no sense of beating yourself up over it. I mean, we've all done it uh, and it's easy to do because, I mean, you can physically see that person that's in front of you. You know, I mean, you can't always necessarily see Jesus per se, but Keep your eyes, keep your attention focused on him. And what people are doing or aren't doing won't affect you or offend you so much. All right. So hopefully this has blessed you. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments, feel free to drop, drop those uh, in the comment section. Thanks again for tuning in with me tonight. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.